Baylor on Saturday at McLean Stadium. Now, we've talked about, and we have been, I don't want to say we've been all over this, but we've kind of been ahead of the curve on Chapter 2 of the Big 12's expansion. Right now, and we've said this from the beginning, that Memphis and Boise State, if you had the radar, and there were bogeys coming into your radar, those would be the two bogeys, Boise State and also Memphis. Those would be the two right now that most likely are on your radar. Now, what may delay that, a couple of things. Uh, One of them is, is that Texas and Oklahoma, they want to leave. We know that. That's not breaking news. The SEC wants them sooner rather than later, and I'm sure ESPN wants that as well. But here's the deal. There will be exit fees no matter what. Texas and Oklahoma, with they, what they should do, are saying, we're not leaving until after 24-25. You know, we know, that's not what they really want to do, but they're, they're, what's the word, posturing? Posturing. Legal maneuvering. And so what kind of is, is you have this race, and then it's like a dead period, like almost recruiting. And so what Texas would like to do, and I say Texas and Oklahoma, is say, okay, we'll pay the exit fees. Let's just say it's after 2023. We'll pay the money. But we want to make it in two installments. All right? This is kind of what's maybe part of what's going on behind the scenes. They want to afterpay their, <laughs> their Let, Let's come up with a number. I don't know. It's $160 million. They want to lay yeah, away? Yeah, that's they what want it to is. lay away their... Yeah. Hey. Like, lay away is the most popular thing on internet shopping now. you got afterpay. You've got, like, all these different apps where you get four installments for your... I remember you know, my mom and dad they used to have to go do layaway. We've had to do layaway. I mean, it uh, all depends. Sometimes you'd like to just buy it straight up. Yeah. When I was a kid, I wanted a... I was nine years old, and the Batman movie had just come out. And I had to save up my money to get like the Batmobile or the Batwing yeah. like together. I wanted both of them. And granted, my parents could afford them. I think together it was like $60. But the point was I wanted to save up my money. So I had to pay Target like $5 a month or $10 a month, part of my mouth for six months. And then I got them as like a lesson. But mm-hmm. I bought the Batmobile and the Batwing from the Michael Keaton Batman movie on layaway. That's yep. what Texas is trying hey, to do. If there's you don't have the money, you put it on a credit card and you end up paying more. And sometimes then that gets you in trouble there. Or you do layaway. Or you don't get it if you want to get something. So here what is some of the legal maneuvering is every, it's right now it's like attorneys. And eventually what will happen, the attorneys, whoever side, whether it's ESPN or it's Big 12 or it's Texas or it's Oklahoma or it's whoever, eventually they'll say, okay, we've got enough hours built up, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we're, we're done now. Let's, let's make this happen. But let's make sure we build up the hours. We're getting paid to do this, so we need to do this. And also trying to represent whoever the client is. But if Texas and Oklahoma, let's just say for right now, and I have no idea what the number is. I know we've guesstimated that. Let's say each of them has 100, uh, $80 million. Is that about right? Like each team, if they had two years left, would have to pay $80 million apiece, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what they would like to do, and of course, why not, is, hey, we'll give you half of that now. You let us leave, and then you can have your new conference and go with it, do whatever you want. But if you allow that to happen, and I'm being told that if you allow that to happen, then guess what? You let them both pay $80 million combined, and there's, still a, there's another $80 million left. What's going to happen, Paul, Craig? They're going to tie it up in court so they don't have to pay all that $80 million. May never get it. You may get $40 million, not $80 million. You may get $65 million. You may not get $80 million. You may get nothing. But that is something, and that kind of right now is what is most likely behind the scenes occurring. It's not as if Texas can't write the check for both of them. They can. And, and I don't know if they will. I'm not saying they should have to pay for Oklahoma. But it's also part of, hey, we want to make sure as well – that we are still kind of, even though you guys have moved on a little bit without us, we want to still have kind of a say on when this happens, which is fine, right? When you have that kind of clout, you can do that. Now, one of the other things that apparently could be happening is both the commissioners, the Pac-12 and Big 12, have been on the phone. They've talked. And the concern is, is moving forward. I know everyone may think the Pac-12 is in a better place, and that's an opinion. People have an opinion on that. But also what might be happening is, Hey, in case things start sliding sideways again, you don't look at my guys, I won't look at your guys. And I put that up on the site, and everybody started talking about what teams from the Big 12 might go to the Pac-12. You might be looking at the wrong direction. Yeah, man. Why is it that way? There's an obsession that some teams, some fan bases in the Big 12 have with the Pac-12. It's weird, man. And it, it dates back to when the first bungled attempt occurred, 
And so Oklahoma State and Texas Tech fans, to some extent, feel like they're a part of the We Belong in the Pac-12 party because they were initial tag-alongs with OU and Texas. And then when that fell apart, uh, you know, they went from like, hey, we're part of the club to, oh, wait, now we're not really so much part of the club. Now OU and Texas leave and everybody, rather than saying, okay, how do we fix this, which, which is what they're saying publicly, uh, behind the scenes there are those schools that are still going, okay, what's our exit strategy? Like we're all saying things in public, but – Really, we got to be looking out. And so I keep seeing that connection of Tech to the Pac-12 or Oklahoma State to the Pac-12, and I'm just like, but why? Like, I mean, a couple weeks ago when you didn't know what the Big 12 was going to turn into, I mean, it makes some sense, but now with the teams they've added, why would you still be pursuing a, a spot in the Pac-12? Yeah. Why would that be of interest? I, I don't understand that. Here's a, from uh, one of those on the website. Uh, potential Pac-12 candidates, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, Kansas, and TCU, question mark. I don't get it. Why is it that way? Yeah. Why I mean, but, why are you automatically thinking that it's going to be four that way? Why wouldn't you at least think there's a possibility? Because if you think about four teams out of the Pac-12, Utah, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, I Arizona. Got, uh, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, and Colorado. In Colorado, why? I'm not saying it's, it's not going to be Cal, Stanford. We know that it's no. not going to be Southern Cal, UCLA, or Oregon. But why? Why is it immediately? But if they're not on there, why if, couldn't it be the other way around? That, and so that's why. Hey, we all need to take care of ourselves. But for right now, we won't look at you if you don't look at us. Yeah. That, now that's, that you may not be. trust that. Yeah. But that's that that also. Um, so and, and here's from one of the responses. It's not the Big Twelve schools watching the Pac-12. It's the other way. And he brought up, in fact, very good post. That doesn't mean you're right. But this is the information. I wouldn't put it out there if I didn't feel pretty good about this. Uh, and, and then there's some that don't want Memphis. And there's some that don't want too late. Now, the SMU story. One of the things about SMU, and I know we've got calls and texts, 254-339-1122. One of the things that may not be able to register is what does the SMU, what do they bring to the table? Maybe in your opinion or in a lot of people's opinion, nothing with all due respect to SMU. But what if it brings value to ESPN, no matter what we think? And what if that somehow allows you to be able, I'm just saying, so that's why they're in the conversation. Now, I don't want ESPN telling me what I need, but this is also all a part of a spider web of direction. Also, I don't know if I trust the ESPN's overall thought of value that they're willing to torpedo a network that they launched 10 years ago yeah. already because they know that didn't work. Their value thought and, and I would love. I think whoever sold ESPN on the Longhorn Network needs to do sales conventions like like Tony Robbins or whatever, you know, motivational speaking sales conventions, like the dude at the Jordan Belfort at the end of Wolf of Wall Street, where sell me this pen kind of crap because he somehow convinced a network to give them 15 to $20 million a year and said, oh yeah, people in Sheboygan, Wisconsin are going to love the hell out of this network. It's going to be great. There's no way. Like, you know, and then you, like, all you'd have to do is walk around the streets of Sheboygan and go, hey, are you excited about the Longhorn Network? The what now, eh? I don't know. No. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a non-factor for me. It's just a channel I flip through. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even register. And we live in the state yeah, where even, it is. Don't even re it's basically Univision or like USA to me. It's just it's just a channel that I pass by that means nothing to me. Yeah, yeah. That's just is stuck on my cable, uh, you know, and that's why a lot of people cut cables. It's unnecessary yeah. crap on their bill like the Longhorn Network fee or, you know, whatever other channels that you're forced to have to pay for, but uh yeah, they, they pulled the wool over the eyes of ESPN. On the SMU thing, I, I, you know, there's probably some people that have some feeling that I'm like anti-SMU. I'm going to be very clear. I'm all for them you know, joining the Big 12 if that's what the decision ultimately is. But give me a good reason why. you know, And, and not some, oh, well, you just don't know. But what if I told you that this and this and ESPN, okay, well, then I need ESPN to explain why SMU would bring some value. And not just take their word for oh, it. Oh, it's not going to be. It, it, there's no, going to be more to that. There's a method to this madness. No, there's of a course. rhyme and a reason. But, but yeah. I mean, the reaction has been no. No, 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 no. Right? Right. And and so, because there's nothing that makes sense. Uh, and, and don't start with the, well, they bring Dallas. We are, we've already established, no, they don't. And, and no, they won't. So, if ESPN feels they bring value, I'm saying, I'm curious, how is that? 
Like, how is it that they bring some secret value that only ESPN seems to realize, but everybody else looks on the surface and goes, okay, they're not pulling the market themselves. They're just part of many teams that can pull the Dallas market. Many teams already in the Big 12 who do well in the Dallas market. So it's not that. Um, it's not size. It's not TV ratings. It's not, it's not history. Uh, it's not, like, so what, what would it be? And so you, set, you indicate that there's something there that ESPN has interest in. I'm just saying I would love to know what that is because than, I don't understand what it could be. Other than super wealthy people that live in Highland exactly, Park. Exactly, I mean, right. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that, and if you were to line up, like, the positives of SME, like, yeah, that's the number one. And, you know, right now, currently, and for the last, I'd say, four or five years or so, a very strong football program uh, with Sonny Dykes. But outside of that, like, ex yeah, I'd want an explanation uh, other than just taking ESPN's word for it. All right, here's here's the part, and I keep grabbing. I, I got to tell everybody this. I got contacts today. I have those read. I have 45 pairs of readers. I had Lasix in 04. I don't want to get off topic, but today I went to a, a, a contact, a doctor who fitted me for contacts because I got tired of wearing the readers, and I could actually see my laptop screen, and it's amazing, and I don't know why I didn't do, do it earlier, and, and Lasix was the best thing I ever did with anything surgery, but uh, I, I'm going to keep doing this on occasion because it was just a habit. <laughs> Um, how, do, how do the new contacts, the new age of contacts feel versus yeah, I'm the going backwards, plastic shells you put on your eyeballs yeah. 20 years ago? I, I, I have them somewhere here. I don't know where they are. but I So, the SMU thing, if you are trying, you re, let's not forget where the Big 12 was. All right, for a second, think about where they were even three, four, or five weeks ago. And they're not going to do, uh, you, you don't, I'm not saying this because they might do something, they screwed it up before. But they're not going to just add people just because they think they need to add people. There has to be something give and take in between. But remember, what did everyone think at the end of July when Texas and Oklahoma announced they're leaving? The Big 12 may not be alive by the end of the summer. Well, they've reacted to that. That doesn't mean they're strong. Doesn't mean they're Big 10 SEC but I continue to wonder why in the world everybody thinks the Pac-12 is so healthy when they themselves might have teams flirting with the Big Ten. I'm not saying SMU is the answer. I'm just saying that they're a part of the multiple choice, like Tulane, maybe like a couple of other teams, Boise State, Memphis. So, See and that? I did get the email from Brian. Brian got an email from a Memphis fan that was furious with our segment with John Martin yesterday about that he didn't represent Memphis very well. I haven't had time to read it, but I will. Uh, not everybody agrees with all the opinions. Believe me, I know. So, uh, but that's, that's just an update on kind of where we are. The reaction that I see on the board and on you, everyone's like, what? I, I, you, did you not want me to bring it up? I'm just telling you kind of what's going on behind the scenes. That doesn't mean any of it actually occurs. The most important, don't bury the lead, is Texas and Oklahoma would like to pay maybe in two clumps. They can pay in one. But that might be what holds everything up now to where you get after 2023. Okay? And the reason why is you don't give somebody a chance. You had somebody on the street. Hey, give me $1,000 for that. And the guy goes, well, I'll pay you the rest of it later on. You don't know who he is. You don't know. You, he walks away. You never see him again. Now, you know how to find him. But then legal maneuvering, you might lose all the money you're supposed to get with the second payment. All right.